Hi and welcome to Old Time Knowledge. Well in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make one of our favorite Christmas hors d'oeuvres. It's little miniature biscuits, ham biscuits in this case, but you could stuff these with sausage, you can put cheese in them, if you want you can just bake them and then when you're ready to serve them, you know, have jam, different jams and jellies and things for people to have. But the, this is just such a nice little finger food. We absolutely love these. You can make these ahead a couple of days, put them in the refrigerator. Then when you're ready to, if you want to heat them up, you can put them in the oven on say 350 covered with aluminum foil and just, you know, get them warm. That's the main thing. You're just wanting to, to warm them up. But they look so nice um, on, a, on a plate. What we normally like to have is a variety of them. So we might have some ham biscuits. We might have some little sausage biscuits, and then we might have some with cheese in them or something like that. But I think you're gonna really like these, so stick with me and we'll get right to it. All right, so this is the standard biscuit video that I always use. If you came to my channel from my perfect fluffy biscuits every time video, this is the same recipe, but I'm just gonna show you how to make a miniature version of these. But in this case, you're going to be doing a couple of things a little different. Um, also, I'm going to be showing you a trick that I've learned from viewers, but first, we gotta get two cups of Daily Bread Self-Rising Flour. Now, this is for 24 of these miniature biscuits. You can definitely double or triple this recipe, whatever you wanna do, but I'm just using the same exact recipe that I always use when I'm making biscuits because this is the amount I want to make for this video. So two cups of the Daily Bread Self-Rising Flour. Also, if you've wondered about that container, I've gotten comments about that before. I didn't buy the container to say Daily Bread Self-Rising Flour. It's a standard Rubbermaid kitchen container and I will link them in the show notes if I can find a link for them. And I just taped the front label from the Daily Bread Self-Rising Flour on the front just because I think it's cute, and also this way it differentiates it from this, the all-purpose flour in my pantry. So the next thing I need to add to this is butter. And in the past, I always just, you know, cut my butter up, put it in the flour, and mashed it with a fork. But now I've got this cool trick, y'all. Commenters on my other biscuit video had told me, you should try just grating butter into the flour is so much easier. And I thought that's genius. Why have I never thought of that before? So now I do that all the time. I love it. So you're gonna put about five tablespoons of butter for the two cups of self-rising flour. And of course, double or triple as needed if you're doubling and tripling the recipe. So this is, I'm just grating down five tablespoons of flour. And the reason why you're doing this is you want to have the, the, the nice cold butter all mixed in with the flour really good. That butter is gonna, as it as it is in the oven and it bakes, it's gonna release steam. That's what's gonna give lift to your biscuits. I mean, obviously so will the baking powder that's in the self-rising flour, but the butter being really cold and then, you know, cooking inside of the biscuits will cause some of that gorgeous lift as well. So you just wanna make sure that your, your butter is just all mixed in really good with your flour so that you really, you know, almost can't see the butter. I mean, it should be almost like a grainy texture once you've mixed all the, the butter in, but I'll show you. Um, and I just get a fork and just mix it in and um, just sort of toss it around a little bit. And um, I'm gonna speed things up here in a minute, but I wanna add the last ingredient first. For the biscuits, yes, it's only three ingredients. It's self-rising flour, butter, and milk. I use about two cups of self-rising flour, about five tablespoons of butter, and about three quarters of a cup of milk. You can use buttermilk, but if you use buttermilk, you need to add a pinch of baking soda because the acid in the buttermilk is gonna require that to make sure you get the same lift that you're looking for. I mean, it's not gonna make it so the biscuits don't happen at all, but we're talking about the fluffiness component, right? So, Another thing I will say about these miniature biscuits is you don't want them to be like so high like that other fluffy biscuit video because they'll topple over. You know, they're really a small, they're gonna have something inside of them, they'll topple over. So I'm gonna show you one of the things I do with this biscuit dough that I don't do when I'm trying to make big fluffy biscuits, but we'll get to it. But I'm gonna speed this part up where I'm just mixing it all up and that'll get us there faster. So 
Here's the thing, in that fluffy biscuit video, I emphasize that it's so important that you don't knead your biscuit dough. You don't handle it too much because that will cause them to be a little tougher and they won't be quite as fluffy. You're going to see me handling this a lot more, but you're also going to see me using a rolling pin on this biscuit dough. And the reason for that is I want it to be pressed out and I want it to hold together really well because again, these are going to be really small biscuits and it goes back to that toppling over factor. We don't want that to happen. So I'm working this dough more than I did. If you saw my cheddar, cheddar biscuits video, cheddar biscuits, kind of like the cheddar bow biscuits at Bojangles, y'all, I'll link that in the show notes below. But with that, I also worked the dough more. And the reason in that case is because you need the dough to hold together to wrap around the cheese when you're, when you're putting the cheese in those biscuits to bake them. But in this case, I've worked the dough more and I'm also going to roll it out because that's how we're going to make sure that it's nice and thin enough and I'm going to use a, a, a little cookie cutter from my favorite cookie cutter container and that's how I'm going to get them to be perfectly shaped so they're all uniform and so I'm just going to speed things up again so you can see how I do this. Alrighty, so I will link in the show notes the link to those cookie cutters. Y'all, I love them. I love them so much. They're all, all different sizes. They're appropriate for everything. I think for this one, I'm using probably like, I can't remember if it's like one and a half inches or two inches, but you saw me hold my finger up to it, and it's like two sections of my finger. Um, so anyway, right now I've got my skillet heated up because I'm just going to heat up my ham. I have some, um, some little country biscuit slices of Daniel Booneham. I'll also link that below in case you can't get that in your area. This is what I like to get. Um, I actually I soaked it a few times, rinsed it really good, and then I just, um, I've just had it sitting in this little dish. Um, but I'm going to put it in this, in this skillet and heat it up and get it ready to put in the biscuits because it has to be heated to 160 degrees. Um, but, you know, having it, in, having it in the water, soaking in the water, not only reduces the salt a little bit because it's super salty ham, but it also just kind of just softens up, up the texture a little bit for, for the inside of the biscuits rather than just having it go right in the skillet, which can have a tendency to dry it out. So um, anyway, let me just get this heated up. Um, and then what I'll be doing is since I'm making 24 biscuits, once these little four pieces of ham are done heating up in the skillet, I'll be cutting them into about 24 pieces or thereabout. Um, you can tear them, but I, I mean, I, I do kind of like them to be at least kind of uniform in size. And sometimes if you're just tearing them, they might not come out just as uniform. So anyway, let me get this heated up and then the biscuits will be done relatively quickly. I'd never told you how what the temperature should be on the oven. These should be baking in a 475 degree oven. I mean, have a have a look at them at about nine or ten minutes. Um, I just keep an eye on them once they once the tops start just browning slightly, then I know that they're ready. 
And uh, but it's very important that your oven has been heated up for a while before you put the biscuits in. Like don't put it at 475 and then immediately put them in because your oven won't be hot enough. It needs to be really hot. This is this is one of the tricks of of baking biscuits and making sure you get a good lift to them. You need to make sure that oven is hot 475 or even 500. I usually do 475, so but it, my, my oven had been at this temperature for probably 20 minutes before I actually put the biscuits in there to bake. Um, so, but they'll be done, they'll be done pretty quickly and then I'll show you. And um, it's really cool because they're still going to have some good lift to them, but they don't need to be, again, as tall as they would be if I was making them like for the breakfast table where I'm, you know, making nice big fluffy biscuits or whatever. So let me get to that part where I'm getting these, um, ham the, the ham cut up and getting the biscuits filled and show you how I assemble all this okay the biscuits should be done take a look aren't they just adorable I mean they look just like my other biscuits but they're just really small there's really tiny little biscuits they're so cute I love these so much um, and so let me get that like I said I'm going to get the ham cut up and then I will show you how I split these but this is important with the biscuits you don't want to just start cutting them as soon as you take them out of the oven let them sit just let them sit and just come down to like room temperature almost room temperature before you start splitting them because otherwise you're liable to cause them to just fall apart and you don't want that to happen so um I've gotten the little pieces of ham cut up. The biscuits are now at room temperature. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm getting the biscuit to like the, the broadest part of the biscuit. And then I am splitting it with a fork and I'm just putting the ham right inside just like that. And you'll see me grab another one. You see where I find like where it's kind of, it's already starting to try to split a little bit just from where it lifted in the oven. And then I put the ham in. So they should be really easy to split with a fork. You should have gotten enough lift that they should have that. Um, and if not, if you know, you can always use like a little steak knife or something to cut them in half, but really they should be pretty easy to just split with a fork if you just find the widest side, like where it's risen the most, because there's always going to be one side that's risen a little more than the other. And you just look for where those little seams are, where the dough has started lifting up look for those and put your fork in them and it'll just help you split the biscuits open just just perfectly so let me speed this part up and then I'll show you it all when it's nice and done now I just want to give you some suggestions for these I've already mentioned sausage I've already mentioned cheese um, you can also think about like if you if you've made any jams over the summer um, or if you've bought any jams that you really like or you get those little Dickinson jams like they have at Cracker Barrel and you you know you just keep those because sometimes people will buy those in bulk and just have those you can have several of these that are just little biscuits that you've just split open and you serve you know some little jams and some cute little jam pots near the biscuits so that people can fix them however they want um, I'm wondering if it might also be good with some cream cheese and pepper jelly I know I love having pepper jelly, which I'll link in the description below, with cream cheese and crackers at Christmas. That's another delicious um, little appetizer. But um, this is these are just so cute, y'all. These are so cute. Um, and no matter what you fill them with or whether you let your guests fill them with whatever they want, this is going to be a hit. I'm sure of it. Um, it's just the right size and especially if you have different ones like different flavored ones then they can they can sample a variety of them and you know it'll, it'll, it'll just hit the spot these are so good to nibble on while you're opening presents or just just visiting and sharing memories or whatever the case may be but I hope you'll try these and let me know what you think in the comments below I'll see you again soon and I thank you so much for watching bye-bye mm -hmm.